for my next trick, I'm going to keep building this up. Nothing too big, but I am going to change my Unix script busy loop into a Python one. I'm not going to be adding moving parts just yet. I'm just going to be swapping out the moving parts. So that takes place way over here. Yes, I open up a terminal for it. So this brings me into a Linux container on a network attached storage server device that I have. And uh, here we are where I have made it possible to do little tricks like, well, first a repo that I made is called Pulse. So I'll CD into Pulse. It's technically not even a software repository yet. I haven't gone through the Git stuff. But inside of there, there is a pulse.sh file. And I can go into a screen session, which I guess will lose me my whole CDing in and showing you around, but I'll call that screen Pulse. And now I can CD back into Pulse. And from the screen name Pulse, I can use the shell program to run the program named Pulse.sh, and it is printing the date every two seconds. And we can now also close out of that and go back in, and it'll still be running. Screen reattach pulse, not uh, with a trailing slash, and there it is still running just like we left it. Now, this is being accomplished with a program called pulse.sh. I'll control C out. I'll exit. We don't need to be in, to, in that screen. I'll CD into pulse and I'll vim pulse.sh. And you can see it's just a few lines. See, just a, a few lines there in, uh, in vim. Well, true date, do sleep to done. I see this being pretty much uh, as easy to accomplish in Python, which starts opening the door to other things. So vim pulse.py instead of pulse.sh. Now, honestly, it's not exactly as easy as Python, as easy in Python, but you do have while. That's a piece of good news, right? So while true. And uh, in Python, you've got. Uh, print uh, I don't have the date stuff available yet so let's start with this while true print hello that's going to be printing hello an awful lot and awful quick so I'll throw in a gratuitous sleep for two seconds except we're now going to have to import from time import sleep. Save, quit. And we should be able to go Python pulse.py. And it won't show the date just yet. Oh, I needed a colon in there. How many people were shouting that out quietly in your heads? Hello, two seconds, hello, two seconds, hello. So let's make it a date. Control C, up arrow to the Vim command. And we will also, uh, from date time, import date time. And I believe date time has a now. So we can turn that, just printing that, F str that string into printing an F string. And with an F string there, we can use inside curly brackets uh, variables of contents like uh, date time dot now if I have it correctly and that should do automatic string conversion of that object uh, the preferred default string conversion we'll see if that's true yeah there we go every two seconds it's hitting an odd number it's a little different format than the bash version of it, right? So there's the Python version of it, but we can also do sh dot forward slash uh, pulse dot sh. And you might ask, why am I doing dot forward slash here, but not here? 
uh, it's a habit. I used to have situations where it failed if I didn't give it a at least a relative path. So I've formed the habit of giving it a relative path. So Linux's default date program, command line date program, is a little bit different format-wise than a string formatted Python date, but uh, the, the idea gets across and do the same thing in multiple ways. And so I guess that's almost the end of the uh, demonstration. We have switched over a long running script from a .sh file to a .py file. I guess as the final demonstration, we can make a screen named pulse. And from inside of there, we can invoke our script Python style, cd pulse, python pulse.py. And now, as we could with the bash or the Unix shell version of this, we can just close out of that, and then we can just open back into it. Screen hyphen reattach pulse. Oh, I had a trailing slash somewhere in the command line history, so it did it again. And make it bigger with some control pluses, and there you have it. The same long-running script, but now as a .py file. And that lays down some more of the foundation work, because certainly when I take the next step in this project, I'm not going to want a bash script to be in control, a Unix uh, shell script to be in control. I'm going to want something more like Python so that I can do powerful things. Now you can control C and stop it or you can hit control A and then D for detach but you just gotta know these things. You're gonna have to Google up GNU screen and learn its commands for doing some of its navigational stuff. It doesn't come naturally but it's part of the standard uh, GNU commands so it's the one to learn. There are some Tmux fans out there but I would advocate screen over tmux because of its ubiquity anywho i guess that's pretty much it right screen reattach pulse it's really there so i can x out of it and go back in and we can screen reattach pulse oh same thing keeps getting me there, that's the point of the video. Um, thanks for joining me. Uh, join me again as we, shall I commit to it? Shall I say this is going to be a uh, Linux service, a Linux daemon on the next video. I will commit myself to it because I don't see any more way to stall for time before uh, jumping into what makes this so friggin' powerful because you have the service stop, service start, and you know keeping it running checking that it's running every second every five seconds and if it doesn't restarting it real service stuff so join me again when we cover that